Hello students, welcome to EPG Pathsala. I am Professor D. Vail Murugan, Pharma Head of the Department, Centre of Advanced Study in Crystallography and Biophysics, University of Madras, Gindi Campus, Chennai. And I am at present working there as the University Grants Commission's Basic Scientific Research Faculty. Today, I am going to talk to you on the module describing the X-ray scattering from nucleic acid fibers and this is from paper biocrystallography. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. First of all, I am going to introduce you all to DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid and also RNA, the ribonucleic acid. We are also going to learn about the structure of nucleotide units which are made up of the nucleic acid bases as one of the unit and also we are going to describe the conformational parameters of nucleic acids which are many. Then we are going to deal with the structural elucidation of DNA namely the Nobel Prize winning the double helical structure. Then we are going to learn about the base sequence of DNA which constitutes a template which is known as the replication of DNA and we are going to learn how the genetic code is read in groups of three. We are going to look into the different structural forms of the DNA and also how the DNA molecules pack in three dimensions. Let us first consider the nucleic acid. DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid, is a long chain polymeric molecule that carries information about the amino acid sequences in proteins. This polymeric molecule consists of many thousands of deoxyribonucleotides of four different kinds joined in a sequence that is characteristic for each organism. DNA molecules are usually double stranded. The chromosome of prokaryotic cells is a single large DNA molecule tightly bunched into a, a nuclear zone or nucleoid. Eukaryotic cell contains many DNA molecules, each generally much larger than the single DNA molecule in prokaryotes. The DNA functions to store the complete genetic information required to specify the structure of all proteins and RNAs of each species of organism. To program in time and space, the orderly biosynthesis of cell and tissue components to determine the activities of an organism throughout its life cycle and to determine the individuality of a given organism. Viruses also contain nucleic acids as their genetic material. Some contain DNA and some contain RNA. Let us look into the properties of the ribonucleic acid called RNA. These ribonucleic acids consist of long strings of ribonucleotides. Although they are much shorter than DNAs, they are much more abundant in most cells. In prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, the three major classes of RNA are messenger RNA denoted as mRNA, ribosomal RNA denoted as rRNA and transfer RNA denoted as tRNA. Each consists of a single strand of ribonucleotides and each has a characteristic molecular weight, nucleotide sequence and biological function. The messenger RNA or mRNA functions as the template used by ribosomes for the translation of the genetic information into the amino acid sequence of proteins. The nucleotide sequence of mRNA is complementary to the genetic message contained in a specific segment of the template strand of DNA. A single eukaryotic cell may contain over 104 different mRNA molecules, each coding for one or more different polypeptide chains. Transfer RNA also consists of a single strand of ribonucleotides but in a highly folded conformation. The number of nucleotides the tRNA has is between 
70 and 95 and the molecular weight ranges from 23,000 to 30,000 Dalton. Each of the 20 amino acids found in proteins has one or more corresponding tRNA to bind it, carry it to ribosomes and serve as an adapter for translating the genetic code words of the mRNA into the amino acid sequence of proteins. Each tRNA contains a specific trinucleotide sequence called the anticodon, which is complementary to a codon, the trinucleotide sequence of mRNA that codes for one specific amino acid. Let us consider in detail the structure of nucleotide units. Nucleotide units, which are building blocks of DNA and RNA molecule, contain three characteristic components, namely a nitrogenous base, a pentose sugar, and a phosphoric acid. The structure shown is that of a ribonucleotide. In deoxyribonucleotide, the OH at 2' prime position is replaced by H. The nitrogenous bases are derivatives of two parent heterocyclic compounds, pyrimidine and purine. DNA contains two principal pyrimidine bases, cytosine C and thymine T, and two principal purine bases, adenine A and guanine G. RNA also contains two principal pyrimidines, C and uracil U, and two principal purine bases, adenine A and guanine G. The single important difference in the basis of DNA and RNA is that thymine is a principal pyrimidine in DNAs but does not occur often in RNAs. Conversely, uracil is a principal pyrimidine in RNAs but occurs only rarely in DNAs. The pyrimidine and purine bases are flat molecules that are relatively insoluble in water. The principal pyrimidine and purine bases of DNA and RNA are tabulated below. For the two cases, DNA and RNA, purine, what are the purines in DNA, what are the purines in RNA, what are the pyrimidines in DNA, what, what are the pyrimidine in RNA. So this shows the B form of DNA. Here we have, right hand side we are given the nucleotide structure, a base is there, a sugar is attached, with that a phosphate is attached. And below you have these uh, bases given here and the picture also shows the base forming between, uh, base pairs between two ba bases, base pairs. The two kinds of sugar molecule found in nucleic acids are D ribose in RNA and 2 prime deoxy D ribose in DNA. In nucleotides, these sugars occur in beta furanose form. Though DNA contains the four major bases A, T, G and C, sometimes it contains minor bases also. Usually, the minor bases are methylated form of principal bases, but in some viral DNAs, certain bases may be hydroxymethylated or glycosylated. Such altered or unusual bases in DNA molecules are, in many cases, specific signals that play important role in programming or protecting genetic information. Minor bases are also found in RNAs, especially in tRNA. This shows the conformational parameters of nucleic acids. Parameters affect the conformation of nucleic acids. We have seen the torsion angles, so many are there, and at respective places, they have emerged. This is the conventional symbols used. The dihedral angles related to the conformation of the nucleic acids are alpha, beta, gamma, delta, nu, zeta, and this is zeta, bigger zeta, and chi. The possible values for the allowed conformation of the nucleic acids for the above angles vary from 150 degree to 230 degree. The preferred value depends upon ring puckering. For deoxy sugar, alpha varies from 150 degrees to 230 degrees. For ribose sugar, alpha varies from 180 degrees to 230 degrees. Here, we have two figures, figure 31.3 describing the possible staggered conformations and figure 31.4 describing the glycosidic torsion angles. So here we have staggering means three angles for torsion angles, 60 degree called G plus conformation, 180 degree twist con T conformation, minus 60 degree G minus conformation. Delta equals 180 degree and 
epsilon equal to 60 degree or 180 degree or 300 degrees. So, rather gamma is also having the three types G plus T G minus. The right hand side we have defined what do you mean by chi is nothing but O1 1 C11 N9 C8 or it is a traction angle between the bond C11 N9. The absorbed values of chi are 0 to 90 degree anti conformation, 180 degree 220 degree syn conformation. In helical nucleotide, these values are equal alpha, beta, gamma, delta i, epsilon, and zeta. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, and zeta are all positive means right under helix. If they are minus alpha, minus beta, minus gamma, minus delta, minus epsilon, minus zeta, then it denotes left under helix. On the confirmation aspect, zeta equal to 70 degree is only allowed, whereas zeta equal to minus 70 degree is not allowed. Hence, left under helical structure is not possible for nucleic acids. Now we are going to discuss the structural elucidation of DNA, the double helical structure. Figure 31.5 shows the fiber diffraction picture with the 10th layer line, 3.4 angstrom. This is the image taken from uh, Rosalind and Franklin publication in Nature in 1953. James Watson, the American uh, geneticist, and Francis Crick, the physicist, deduced the three-dimensional structure of DNA and shared the Nobel Prize. The X-ray photograph involved in the elucidation of DNA structure was the X-ray fiber diffraction pattern taken by Professor Rosalind Franklin in the winter of 1952-53 to 53 at King's College, London. The helical form is indicated by the cross waves pattern of the X-ray reflection is known as the X pattern. The very heavy black region at the top and at the bottom indicate that the 3.4 angstrom thick purine and pyrimidine bases are regularly stacked next to each other perpendicular to the helical axis. The following are the important features of the DNA double helical structure. 1. The helical polynucleotide chains are coiled around a common axis. The chains run in opposite directions. Thus, it forms a regular double helical structure. The DNA double helical structure is also known as DNA duplex. Second, the diameter of the helix is 20 angstrom and each chain makes a complete turn at 34 angstrom which is known as the pitch of the helix. There are 10 residues per turn of the helix. Point number 3 is the purine and the primidine bases are flat, relatively water insoluble molecules which tend to stack above each other perpendicular to the direction of the helical axis. Point number 4 is the two chains are held together by hydrogen bond between pairs of bases. Adenine is always paired with thymine and guanine is always pairing with cytosine. We call this as ATGC base pairs. This shows two figures. Figure 31.6 shows the B form of DNA shown in the space filling model and figure 31.7 shows the nucleotide pairing for the four bases thymine, adenine, cytosine and guanine. So, in the figure 31.6, you can see, clearly see the major group and minor group. Major group, we have more space, no? Minor group, we have little space. And we have this uh, diameter of the major group and minor group marked as 12 angstrom and 22 angstrom, respectively. Let us look into the key X ray photograph involved in the elucidation of the DNA structure. Only the above arrangements are possible whatever I have been discussing, for two proteins would occupy too much space to allow a regular helix and correspondingly two pyrimidines would occupy too little. The strictness of these pairing rules results in a complementary relation between the sequences of bases on the two intertwined chains. For example, if we have a sequence ATGTC on one chain, the opposite chain must have the sequence T A 
CAG. A stereochemical consequence of the formation of the AT and GC base pairs is that the two polynucleotide chains run in opposite directions. Thus, if the helix is inverted by 180 degree, it superficially will look the same. The sequence of bases along a polynucleotide chain is not restricted in any way. The precise sequence of bases carries the genetic information. Let us now go in detail about the interactions that stabilize the structure of DNA double helix. The DNA double helix or the duplex as it is often called is held together by the following forces. The first forces of this kind is the hydrogen bonding between complementary base pairs like AT and GC, whatever you have seen earlier. The second force among the many forces is the hydrophobic interactions, which cause the stacked bases to be largely hidden within the double helix, shielded from water and the highly polar backbones on the outside exposed water to have hydrophilic interaction. Third force is the hydrophilic interaction which plays very important role in stabilizing the double helical section of DNA. The phosphate groups on the polar backbones of the double helix are ionized and negatively charged at pH. Thus, DNA is strongly acidic. The double helical structure of DNA allows for accurate replication of genetic information. We are going to say that the base sequence of DNA constitutes a template, or this is nothing but the replication of DNA. Figure 31.8 represents it diagrammatically how the DNA is replicated, getting replicated. The four principal bases of DNA molecule act as a template for DNA replication. We need these templates for the precise replication, transcription and translation of genetic information. The double helical structure of DNA leads to the other aspect of the watson crick hypothesis namely a way in which genetic information can be accurately replicated. There are grooves in the DNA molecule. Careful examination of the DNA model reveals a major groove and a minor groove winding along the molecule parallel to the phosphodiester backbones. The figure 31.9 clearly shows this. In these grooves, proteins can interact specifically with the exposed atoms of the nucleotides because we call it as protein DNA binding. Usually, this is done by hydrogen bonding and thereby they recognize and bind to specific nucleotide sequences without disrupting the base pairing of the double helical DNA molecule. Since the two strands of double helical DNA are structurally complementary to each other, they contain the complementary information in their base sequences. Replication of DNA during cell division was postulated by Watson and Crick. This begins by separation of the two strands, each becoming the template specifying the base sequence of a newly complementary strand made by the replicating system enzymes. The fidelity of replication of each DNA strand, they postulated, would be guaranteed by the fit and stability of the complementary base pairs AT and GC in the two daughter duplexes. It was further proposed that each newly formed daughter double helix would pass intact into daughter cell. The possibility of accurate replication is due to the base pair hydrogen bonding which acts as a highly specific ideal template force. The average energy of a hydrogen bond is 4 kilocal per mole which is equivalent to 8 times the average energy of thermal motion of molecule. We have seen that the DNA is having a double helical structure. This double helical DNA may undergo denaturation or unwinding. Solutions of carefully isolated DNA are highly viscous at pH equals 7.0 and at room temperature about 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. The high viscosity can be attributed to the rod-shaped structure of DNA. When the solution is subjected to 
the extremes of pH are temperature above 80 degree to 90 degree centigrade. Its viscosity decreases sharply, indicating that the DNA undergoes a physical change. This low viscosity is attributed to the denaturation or unfolding of the double helical DNA by disrupting the hydrogen bond between the base pairs and the hydrophobic interactions that hold the stacked bases together. As a result, the double helix rewinds into random desired, disordered coils until the two strands separate completely from each other. During denaturation of DNA, also called melting, no covalent bonds in the backbone are broken. Denaturation of homogeneous DNA is readily reversible as long as a double helical segment of a dozen or more residues unites the two strands with base pairs in register. When the temperature or pH is brought back into the biological range, the unwound segment of the two strands will spontaneously rewind or anneal to yield the intact duplex. However, if the two strands are completely separated, renaturation occurs in two stages. The first stage is relatively slow, since the two strands must first find each other by random collision and form a short segment of complementary double helix. The second stage is much faster, as the remaining bases successively come into register and form base pairs. The two strands then zip themselves together to form double helix again. This is the mechanism. The genetic code is read in groups of three. An obvious consequence of the fact that there are 20 amino acids and only four bases is that each amino acid must be coded for by group of nucleotides. Genetic evidence tells us that groups of three nucleotides are fundamental units and that the code is read linearly starting from one end. These results arise from crosses between mutants with deletions or insertions of one or more nucleotides. Detection or insertion mutants, mutations generally lead to completely non-functional gene. Then in contrast, simple nucleotide switches often lead to leaky genes whose mutant proteins have partial enzymatic activity because of a single amino acid replacement. The virtually complete absence of enzymatic activity in the detection or insertion mutants tells us that their protein product is completely changed. This striking qualitative difference arises from the fact that during protein synthesis, the reading of the genetic code starts from one end of the nucleotide template and occurs consecutive block of three bases. As a result, if a detection or insertion occurs, the reading frame is completely upset. For example, if normally the gene sequence ATTAGACAC dash dash is read as in triplets, first three ATT, then second three AGA, and third three CAC, etc. Then the insertion of a new nucleotide ATT, CAGACAC will lead to a reading in the following groups ATT, CAG, ACAC. So if you look into these two readings, the second reading is completely different from the first reading because of the insertion of a new nucleotide. A similar consequence follows from the detection. Crossing of two detection or two insertions mutant yields double mutants in which the reading frame is still misplaced. Whatever we have given example previously is about a single mutation. Now we talk about double mutation. Partial active gene can however be produced by crossing over between an insertion and a nearby detection. What is the genetic code? The genetic code consists of 64 triplets of nucleotides. These triplets are called codons. With three exceptions, 
ఈచ్ కూడా ఎన్కోడ్ ఫార్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ట్వంటీ అమినో యాసిడ్స్ యూజ్ ఇన్ ద సింథసిస్ ఆఫ్ ప్రోటీన్స్ దట్ ప్రొడ్యూసర్స్ సమ్ రిడెండెన్సీ ఇన్ ద కోడ్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద అమినో యాసిడ్స్ బీయింగ్ ఎన్కోడెడ్ బై మోర్ దాన్ వన్ కోడాన్ వన్ కోడాన్ ఏయుజి సర్వ్స్ టూ రిలేటెడ్ ఫంక్షన్స్ ఇట్ సిగ్నల్స్ ద స్టార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ and also it codes for the incorporation of the amino acid methionine into the growing polypeptide chain the genetic code can be expressed as either rna codons or dna codons rna codons occur in messenger rna or mrna and are the codons that are actually read during the synthesis of polypeptides so a process called translation but each mrna molecule acquires a sequence of nucleotides by transcription from the corresponding gene because dna sequencing has become so rapid and because most genes are now being discovered at the level of dna before they are discovered as mrna or as a protein product it is extremely useful to have a table of codons expressed as dna note that for each table the left hand column gives the first nucleotide of the codon the four middle columns give the second nucleotide and the last column gives the third nucleotide let us look into the table so this table clearly shows the rna codons four columns are given for the uracil cytosine adenine and guanine four nucleotides in rna and all the three letter codes are given the codons and also the amino acids which is coded by this codon is also mentioned here one can go through it is self explanatory this gives the genetic code table 31.2 gives the genetic code these are the codons as they are read on the sense 5 prime to 3 prime strand of dna except that the nucleotide thymidine t is found in place of uridine they read the same as rna codons however mrna is actually synthesized using the antisense strands of dna 3 prime to 5 prime as the template what are the exception to the genetic code the genetic code is almost universal the same codons are assigned to the same amino acids and to the same start and stop signals in the vast majority of genes in animals plants and microorganisms however some exceptions have been found most of these involve assigning one or two of three stop codons to an amino acid instead what will be the effect of ultraviolet light on biological system or in fact on the dna molecule ultraviolet radiation is highly mutagenic at the wavelength that is absorbed most strongly by dna that is at 260 nanometer wavelength when dna absorbs ultraviolet radiation the atoms in the dna molecule become excited this results in a rearrangement of electrons in the atoms in the excited state the atoms become chemically reactive which leads to the formation of covalent bond with another atom an important effect of ultraviolet light in dna is the formation of thymine dimer where thymine molecules form a covalent bonding with the neighboring thymine in the same strand of dna molecule the formation of thymine dimer can cause a permanent change in dna that will pass on through subsequent replication if the thymine dimers do occur most cells can repair by enzymatically breaking the dimer with an enzyme which is known as photolysis the action of photolysis depends on the absorption visible light which is shown in this figures a and b let us go in depth about photo lies action which is explained in figure 31.9 people with genetic disease xeroderma pigmentosum are very sensitive to ultraviolet light they exhibit a high degree of freckling and many of them suffer from skin cancer cells in such individuals are unable to repair thymine dimers apparently because they lack functional photolysis thus ultraviolet in ordinary sunlight can cause severe damage to the skin and leads to the development of numerous skin tumors now we consider the structure of tRNA molecule the transfer RNA molecule there are many different tRNA molecules in a particular cell 
All the tear anemia molecules are small, single stranded nucleic acids ranging in size from 73 to 93 nucleotides. The base sequence of a tRNA, namely yeast tRNA, was first determined in 1965. It was noticed that several segments of this molecule could form double stranded regions that would give the molecule a clover leaf structure, which we will see later, in which open loops are connected to one another by double stranded stems. The structure of such a tRNA molecule is shown in the accompanying figure 31.11. More than 200 different tRNA molecules from bacteria, yeast, plants and animals have been sequenced and for each sequence base pairing can be arranged to produce the clover leaf conformation. If you look at figure 31.11, there is a stem like portion and there is a portion at the bottom which resembles the clove, no? that is why it is known as clover leaf. So, this is the clover leaf structure of the transfer RNA molecule. It is, it is just self explanatory. Everything is there. We have given the loop region, everything. Everything is marked here. What are the characteristic features of a standard tRNA molecule? So, in the figure, some numbers are given. Let us explain what are those. Bases in position 8, 11, 14, 15, 18, 19, 21, 24, 32, 33, 37, 48, 53, 54, 55, 57, 58, 60, 61, 74, 75 and 76 in the previous figure are all invariant in that they are the same in nearly all tRNA molecules whose sequences are known. The 5 prime P terminal is always base pair. It is thought that this contributes to the stability of tRNA. The 3 prime OH terminal is always a 4 base single standard region having the base sequence XCCA 3 prime OH in which X can be any base. This is called the CCA or acceptor end. The adenine in CCA sequence is the site of attachment of the amino acid by the cognate synthetase. These are many so called modified bases tRNA. A few of these dihydrouridine DHU, ribosyl thymine RT, pseudouridine psi, and inosine I occur frequently and in particular regions. In some cases, the substituents of the purine and primidine rings are so numerous and complex that the base is called hypermodified. In only a few cases is the significance of the unusual bases known. There are three large single standard loops. Again, you can go and look at the figure. The lowermost loop is called anticodon loop. It is already mentioned and marked in that figure. The anticodon loop contains seven bases. The anticodon occupies position 34 to 36. It is almost always preceded by two primidines, usually base 33 is uridine, followed by a modified purine. The anticodon loop has general sequence 5 prime, P, Y, U, X, Y, Z, a purine modified, a variable base. The loop containing bases 14 through 21 is called the DHU loop. It is not constrained in size in different tRNA molecules, but may contain up to three extra bases between bases 17 and 18 and one to three extra bases following base 19. The loop containing bases 54 to 60 always at most contain the sequence T psi C and is called the T psi C loop. There are four double sided regions called stems or arms. The stems have no invariant bases and often contain base pairs other than GC and AT such as GU. The three stems attached to each loop are given the name of the corresponding loop. It has been mentioned in the figure as for example the anticodon stem. An additional loop containing bases 44 through 48 is also present. In the picture you can see this. In the smallest tier and a molecule, it contains four bases lacking base 47. Whereas in the largest TRNA molecule, it contains 21 bases with 16 bases present between bases 47 and 48. This highly variable loop is called the extra arm, which is also marked in the figure. What are the different structural forms of DNA? Or in other words, what do you mean by polymorphism of DNA? The structure of DNA is dynamic and it can adopt the following different structural forms. Let us see one by one. BDNA. This is a model proposed by Watson and Crick which is known as BDNA, 
classical double helical structure the essential features of their model are two polynucleotide chains run in opposite directions coiled around a common axis to form a right handed double helix containing about 10 residues per turn the purine and pyrimidine bases are on the inside of the helix whereas the phosphate and deoxy ribose units are on the outside adenine a is paired with thymine t and guanine g is paired with cytosine c the planes of the base pairs are perpendicular to the helical axis at pairs are reinforced by two precisely directed hydrogen bonds and dc pairs by three such hydrogen bonds the double helix is also stabilized by interaction between stacked bases on the same strand the bdna helix can be smoothly bent into an arc or it can be supercoiled this kind of deformation is biologically important because it enables the formation of circular dna let us now discuss about the major grooves and minor grooves in the dna double helix bdna contains two kinds of grooves one is called the major groove which is of 12 angstrom width and the other is called the minor groove which is having 6 angstrom width which means that the minor groove width or diameter is nearly half of the diameter of the major groove these grooves arise because the glycosidic bonds of base pairs are not diametrically opposite the major groove is slightly deeper than the minor groove let us see what is the what is the adna excellent diffraction studies of dehydrated dna fibers reveal a different form called adna which appears when the relative humidity is reduced below about 75% The structure of ADNA is a right-handed double helix containing 11 residues per turn. The A helix is wider and shorter than the B helix, and its base pairs are tilted 20 degrees away from the axis, perpendicular to the helical axis. In ADNA, C3 is out of the helical plane called C3 endo, formed by the other four atoms of the furanose ring. Moreover, the minor groove nearly vanishes. The phosphate groups in the A helix bind. fewer water molecules than do phosphates in bdna hence dehydration favors a form what is a zdna the structure of zdna helix was proposed by alexander rich and his zdna has left handed double helical structure with 12 residues per turn here the phosphates the backbone are zigzag hence this new form is called as z z standing for zigzag zdna ZDNA contains only one deep helical groove. It is associated with sequence of alternating pyrimidine and purine bases. Methylation or bromination of cytosine bases at the fifth position enhances the formation of left-handed ZDNA. This shows clearly the different forms of DNA. CDNA, ADNA, and BDNA are known. Clearly, the, the picture depicts these three. DNAs. This shows the structural parameters of different forms of DNA. So the value will be different depending upon uh, the helix type, no A, B, or Z, and also the characteristics are regarding the shape, screw length, residues per turn, pitch per turn, tilt of base pair from normal to helical axis about the major groove and about the minor groove. You can distinguish between the three types of helices this shows a comparison of the structural properties of a b and z dnas which is tabulated in uh, table 31.4 so these results are derived from single crystal x ray analysis so let us now consider the three dimensional packing of dna molecules a fiber of dna molecules can be drawn in which the long axis of each molecule is parallel to fiber axis can tear molecules packed together in fibrils of regular crystalline form but the cross section of each fibril is small in comparison with the cross section of the fiber a section through a fiber is composed of many fibrils in effect a fiber is a single crystal along c axis but is like a powdered specimen with regard to the directions of the a and b axis the diffraction pattern has the layers characteristics of a linear lattice but each layer line is broken up into spots characteristic of a powder pattern x ray photograph another description is that the diffraction pattern is that of a single crystal which is rotated about the c axis it is relatively easy to classify the spots for 
these are often clearly resolved on the films. So figure 31 to 13 shows the DNA molecule in the unit cell where molecule M1 is displaced in C direction, 11 angstrom relative to the molecule M2. The cell found is orthorhombic as shown in the figure with A 31.2 angstrom, B 22.7 angstrom and C 33.7 angstrom. The basis contains two molecules of DNA in the equivalent position 0, 0, minus 1 over 6 and half, half, minus 1 over 6. This shows the diffraction pattern of A and B form of DNA fiber in figure 31.14. So, this figure has been taken from Amand and Lucas, a publication 2008. So, this is for A DNA and B DNA. In late 1951, Excel diffraction pattern produced by DNA fiber at different conditions were recorded by Rosalind Franklin and her student collaborator Raymond Gosling. Changing the humidity resulted in removing or adding water molecules to the fiber. The figure 31.14 shows the two historic patterns for a drier or a wet fiber containing about 7 to 9 water molecules per nucleotide respectively. Consider the air type pattern found in figure 31.14, images similar to this one had already been obtained previously but not published in print by Maurice Wilkins and Gosling at King. On account of the 2D lattice of relatively sharp discrete spots observed near the center of the picture along the first few layer lines, you can like refer to figure 31.14a. Crystallization implied that the DNA molecules must have a definite regular structure susceptible of determination by classical crystallographic methods. The possibility of such a crystal state of DNA greatly excited Watson when he saw the A pattern publicly shown by Wilkins at a conference in Naples in 1951, which prompted him the WLK structure of DNA at one stage. These serendipitous historical circumstances caused Watson to change his postdoctoral program and learn elements of exterior crystallography from Black's group. Crick was part of this group, ending up discovering the double helix along with Watson. The B pattern also you can see it from figure 31.14b. This was recorded in the high humidity state. The extra water molecules must have invaded the space between the DNA molecules, freeing them from being locked into slides. This separated the molecules and destroyed the regular positional as well as angular order, causing the crystalline spots of A to disappear. In B type, only broad streaks remain along the layer lines, characteristic of X ray scattering by an angularly average molecule. The organization in regularly spaced layer lines of the patterns in the figure 31.14 means that the filamentous molecule has a periodically repeating structural unit in the fiber direction. The layer and separation reveals the value of the period. The observable change in the type and distribution of spots on going from A to B type was taken as a manifestation not only of the perturbation of the long range spatial order just discussed, but also of a reversible change of internal structure of the DNA molecules themselves. So, students, let us summarize what we have learned so far in this module. This module gives us a gentle introduction to the deoxyribonucleic acid DNA and the ribonucleic acid RNA. It also explains you the structure of nucleotide units and also the conformational parameters of nucleic acids. The module explains in detail the structure of DNA and the importance of the double helical structure in replication mechanism. The module also explained about the gene code or the genetic code, how to read the genetic code in triplet and what is the effect of different uh, kinds of mutations. The parameters governing the different sexual forms of DNA are also detailed. The module elucidated the three-dimensional packing of DNA molecules using fiber diffraction method, the fiber diffraction pattern of A and B form of DNA and the difference was also explained in detail. Thank you.